The Naval Academy Museum presents a history of the Navy in 100 objects. One of the things that makes museums so much fun is the eclectic nature of their collections. Often you see things in museums that you simply just can't see anywhere else. And that in fact was the impetus behind this project, to help bring a fraction of these objects that otherwise can only be seen at the Naval Academy to a much broader audience. For our object today, we take a detour from the history of the American Navy, and we'll do this from time to time in the series because some of the objects located at the Naval Academy, frankly, are just too cool to pass up. This episode's object is not a single artifact, but rather a one-of-a-kind collection of exquisitely crafted bone model ships made by French prisoners of war during the Napoleonic Wars that last from the 1790s to 1815, and which pitted the great powers of Europe against one another. The ripple effects of these wars impacted the United States greatly and were partially responsible for the outbreak of the War of 1812 between the United States and the British Empire. This podcast series will explore that conflict in greater detail next month, but to return to our collection today, the museum has just under two dozen of these bone model ships crafted from ration bones. Ghostly shadowed and with a pale white luminescence, these bone ships stand out even amidst the amazing collection of dozens of model ships located in the Naval Academy Museum's vast collection. Today, ship model curator Don Pruel goes into more detail about this collection. He is standing next to the display case containing the models, and behind him is a life-size replica of French sailors behind bars, squinting in candlelight as they put the finishing touches on their next masterpiece. Welcome to Preble Hall. This is on the second deck. We're amongst the uh, Prisoner of War model collection here at the uh, at the museum. My name is Don Pruel. I'm the curator of ship models here and I have the uh, uh, the task of making sure these models stay in good condition uh, for the upcoming years and future curators and for the American public to enjoy for years to come. Now let's talk about these models. These are so unique models. These were all built by French prisoners during the Napoleonic Wars which date back from 1793 to 1815 during those 23 years some incredible pieces were made. Not only these ship models, but other uh, toys. Uh, they had uh, like dominoes. They had, well, they were French. They even built models of guillotines. Uh, at that time, uh, prisoners were kept in, in uh, quite a few prisons. The majority of these ship, ship models came from uh, four different, predominantly four different uh, prisons at that time. You had uh, uh, Norman Cross. You had uh, Dortmoor, uh, Dortmoor, you had um, uh, Liverpool, and also Portchester. Those were the, that's where the majority of these ship models came from originally. Prisoners were also kept within towns or were paroled and lived within towns uh, where they'd have to stay within a mile of the center of town uh, and were basically free to roam about as they, as they wanted. Now, these models, they would sell these. They had a marketplace within the prisons. These prisons were set up where uh, these could be traded or even sold. And believe it or not, they made some decent money. Some of the prisoners actually came out fairly wealthy, uh, depending on their stay within the prison. I mean, they could get as, many as, as much as 27 to 40 pounds per model, which doesn't sound like a lot today. But back in those days, it only required like 40 to 50 pounds a year to live. You know, that was how much it, the cost of living was. So if you could build a couple of these and get these out, you actually were doing quite well. Uh, it was pretty amazing uh, the kind of money they could, uh, they could make off of these. The marketplace also gave them a spot to buy. They also purchased materials they needed, uh, whether it was uh, the cotton for the rigging or, or the silk threads to, to do the rigging or even some tools. Uh, some tools they were able to purchase. Most of them they actually handmade. And you think of making tools. Well, they would use glass. They would use uh, uh, iron, like from uh, like the, the the loops of a barrel. They would take that iron and they'd heat it up and shape it and form it and sharpen it on stones and things like that. So they'd have the tools they need to cut and carve. They'd even make saw blades. Uh, they would take like uh, needles and make drills drill bits out of needles. It was amazing how, how inge ingenious they were at using these different raw materials in order to produce all these different types of tools to make these type of uh, models. I have a model downstairs right now we're working on 
were the holes. We had to reproduce redrilling the holes in the rigging uh, in some of the dead eyes, and it required an eight thousandths drill bit. Now, I can't even fathom an eight thousandths drill bit 200 and some odd years ago, yet that's what they did back then. These models are so precise and unique. It's, uh, it's amazing, the works of art. Now, in our collection, uh, I have about 34 models, 35 models altogether, and about 20 of these out of the 34, 35 I have are made of bone. Uh, you wonder where the bone came from? Well, it came from their rations. You can imagine uh, when you have a prison that has four to 5,000 prisoners in it, and each of them were given a pound and a half of meat, or a half a pound of meat a day, along with some bread and potatoes and vegetables, that all the bones they could take and afterwards dry them out, clean them, and use these bones to shape into, whether it was carvings or into little panels, they'd make the, the, the planking for the hull or for the decks, they'd have to hand carve. Uh, yard arms and masts uh, out of this bone. It's incredible what they were able to do with the bone from their rations. It, it's, uh, it, it's almost, you know, today, to even reproduce that today is a task in itself with modern technology, including that, that electricity. Wow, they didn't even have electricity back then to operate machinery uh, or to even operate lights to see. Uh, that's what's so amazing, how incredible these mo models are with the lack of technology during that time period. Um, and to look at how intricate and how detailed. And they weren't all done by just one individual. Normally they had like a syndicate of people that would work on these models. Uh, one would be extremely proficient at, at doing carving, or another one uh, was good at ship design or rigging. I mean, this was their life. I mean, they were all, they were all sailors. So uh, uh, they knew how these ships would, uh, would have to be built. Now the one thing that is very unique about all of these is they didn't have any plans back then. So almost all of these were done by memory. How would they choose a topic? Well, they would hear word from across the ocean that a certain ship would win a battle, especially if it was a British ship because they were in England at the time. So what sells a famous British ship? So they would depict a model and say, you know, this is the HMS Lion, or whatever of that ship could have been who won that, that glorious battle at the time. And sure enough, they'd find someone to sell it, uh, someone to purchase it. Uh, we have such a fine collection here of both uh, bone and wooden models. Uh, we have fine examples of straw that they used back in there, whether it's a case in which the model was displayed or some of the trinkets that they made out of straw. One of the prisons, they had to discontinue allowing the prisoners from using straw because it was taken from the profits of the local vendors. Well, we're talking about thousands of models that were built during that time period. Unfortunately, the makers themselves, we only know of about four or five people who actually made these models. Uh, but the other unique thing was Dortmoor. Uh, that particular prison, uh, prison was designed and was used exclusively, not exclusively, but was used to house all the American prisoners or American sailors during the War of 1812. Uh, so that makes that particular prison very, very unique in itself. Uh, just some terrific, uh, terrific information that can be learned just from these models. I mean,